care what the Bible says. We want to prove all things. You can call in and ask a question on truth with proof. Truth with proof with your host, Travis Thomas. You can call in with a spiritual question and get a Bible answer. We want to prove all things. 1 Thessalonians 5.21 All right, thanks for joining in with me on Truth With Proof. We have an episode tonight that I hope you're encouraged to see what we're going to study about and see about this individual that I came across uh, came across, came in contact with. Maybe you never watched this. Maybe you're actually on his internet, this Don't Perish. As we can see, don'tperish.com. This individual is a street preacher, lives in a van. There's about three of them. And um, they just go around basically, I would say, pointless harassing uh, with their little picket signs. And they're not really going to do anything that way. They're not going to be able to teach anyone because they are not teachers. They only just say repent, and they will not reason. But I came across these individuals, and you may be on their website. Uh, perhaps maybe they have put their website out there, and you have typed in Don't Perish on YouTube. Well, did you know... God can work through providence to put you in with a gospel preacher, a real gospel preacher, not these uh, phonies, picket masters, afraid to really discuss and have a platform where we're going to talk like adults and not yell and be calm. These guys are not Christians. I say that with love because these individuals like this, they make true Christians, which true Christians are members of, of the Church of Christ and true Christians they they make true Christians like if I go up and someone says well you're a Christian I say well yeah yeah I'm you know I'm a Christian and they say well we see another Christian out there uh, saying these ridiculous things well you know what the world is full of people that say they're Christians I don't support this guy and I don't support denominationalism Baptist Methodist Catholic all of this, Jehovah Witnesses, all of these, and these non-denominational churches, Life Church, The River, and such and so on, you just keep naming them. I don't support them as well, but I want you to investigate the truth with pro friends, God's Word, all right? And so, you know, this guy here, he goes out and he pickets, right? Let me make sure my audio is coming across real well, just to... Quickly check it. Truth with proof. Yep. It's coming across loud and clear. And yes, it still has the southern draw. I can't help. I can't get rid of it. I don't care what settings I fix on my mic. It still, I still sound like I'm from Tennessee. I just, I can't help it. Maybe eventually I'll get a new program that can get rid of that. Because people watch us from all over the world, right? You may be up north and you may just not even watch me because of my southern draw. Well, you need to check out Truth with Proof. Because, look here, Philippians 1.14, And many of the brethren in the Lord waxing became confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Today, friends, we live in a society where I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to tell you the facts. A lot of Christians are scared to death to speak the word. They are. They're even, some of them may be scared of little bitty street preachers like this out here with a picket. Look, individuals, we don't have to worry about this guy named James as far as he's not a psycho in the sense that he's going to come in your building and shoot people, all right? He is just a mouth talker. He is no different from a mocker atheist who wants to get out and just mock, all right? He is not no threat. He does not teach the truth, and he will not reason, and we're going to look at this tonight. He actually, a brother, sent a message to me and wanted me to reach out to this guy. And I emailed him and we text. And he's, he's nothing to be afraid of. This is what I'm trying to get across here, is we need to be bold. I mean, okay, there is a difference between being just rude and arrogant. But we need to be bold. We need to be convicted. 
not so fearful to speak the truth. I mean, you have to give it. This guy is convicted. He's going to go out and speak, but he's not going to listen. He's not going to reason. He's not going to discuss. It's his way or the highway. He put me on his little bitty website. See, he says, I will not be watching Travis Truth a YouTube show. So he's not going to be watching tonight. So really, I'm not going to teach him. He's closed-minded, you know. You ever met someone that's just closed-minded? It's their way or the highway, and you're not going to be able to um, get anywhere with them. You ever met someone like that? That's this guy, you know. He's not going to be able to... Re but this show is more to encourage you guys. And maybe you'll learn something, you know. Maybe... Maybe his friend is watching this, that he's only got, I guess, two that go out and pick it, and I think one's his wife. And we're going to listen to what they say, too, all right, when they go to Crossful Church of Christ. And I just heard today they were at Mount Juliet, right? And so he's got me on his website, and he's got a picture of my family. And some people will be like, well, does that not offend you? Does that not um, get you... Uh, worked up. Sorry about that. Uh, does that not bother you that he would actually put your family out? No, I put this out on you. I put this out on Facebook. See, I'm not ashamed to put a picture of my family on Facebook sitting with a man that's probably like me in the sense that we need to lose a little weight and he's got a red suit on, right? There's nothing wrong with that. Now, my family, my children know that Christmas has absolutely nothing to do with Jesus' birth. But what is wrong with a family coming together to set out on a certain day of the year and give gifts? See, he has the mindset of Jehovah Witnesses, but then the denominationalism just runs with it. And so this is what he thinks that I'm going to go to hell for having my children to have a picture with Santa. See, most people will not even... You know why? Because look at this. Look at this right here. This guy, he acts like he, he won't debate because he doesn't really know the Bible. He knows two or three Bible verses about what he, his favorite verses are, and he's not going to discuss anything with someone that is going to try to use the Bible. Well, of course, I'd say that about the time my Bible program will not open up. And that's not good on truth with proof because that's what it's designed for is to get the Bible up on the screen. All right. Give me just a minute. Let me get my Bible program opened up. Close it back out. Because we are going, if you have your Bibles, you can go to Rome. There it goes. Okay, it's working on this screen over here. At least it's supposed to be working. What is going on with my program? Okay, I think I got it now. Well... I don't know why I'm having to click on Bible. But notice here, if one day esteems one day above another and another esteems every day alike, let him fully be convinced in his own mind. And, the, and the, look what Paul wrote, okay? I don't know why this is not full. Let me see if I can make this bigger for you guys. But when we're talking about manners of opinions, there, there it is a little bit better. One person esteems one day above another, and another esteems every day alike. So Travis likes to exchange gifts with his family. It has nothing to do with Jesus' birthday. The Bible doesn't say that. But let him be fully convinced in his own mind. But see, this individual, he wants to go beyond, and he actually, you know what he calls me? He calls me a Pharisee. Good evening to everyone in the chat. Yes, he calls me a Pharisee. But then you're going to go to hell for taking a picture with Santa. Now, are you going to actually get any words with an individual like that? Let me get back up here, finally figure out how to work my Bible program. All right, and I had it up here in my PowerPoint. Look at this. 
we have some, Paul talks about this in Galatians, and that because of the false brethren unaware brought in who came in privately to spy out our liberty. You know, we have some liberty. Did you know if you want to wear khaki pants or blue jeans, you can? This guy is just ridiculous in his positions, and this is why he would not come on truth with proof. These guys act like they're so big, some of these street pre preachers, but a debate where you say, okay, you got 10 minutes. Now you present your view, and I'm going to rip it apart. And I believe I can, and that's why he is not here. He is a chicken. He acts like he's big, but he is a coward. And you're going to see what he calls some Christians. He calls them cowards as well, but who's sitting here tonight? He can have an audience. He can get up here and present his side. Now notice what he says. This is from his article. He says, we are peacefully street preaching the truth on a public sidewalk outside of another COC false place in Tennessee. See, in Tennessee, he's in the south in Tennessee, and he come across truth with proof, and I'm not scared of him. Did you know if you're watching this and you live close that you can uh, get a hold of an atheist, and I'll discuss with an atheist. Your Baptist, your live church, your atheist, you, I'll even study, I'll discuss this with certain topics, even within the church. You call in. This is a, this is a live call-in program. All right? Now, look, he come to Tennessee. When Travis heard it, he reached out via email. Yeah, someone asked me to. I didn't even know this guy existed. He was on, he has a YouTube channel and wanted me to come on and debate doctrines, okay? He shows who he is by saying we attacked a church. Now, look at this. Now, attacked a church. I put it on there. Is this, is this the definition? Take aggressive action against, and it says most of the time with weapons or armed force, typically in about typically, not always, you know. That is what he did. He, you know what? Truth with proof, attacks. There's nothing wrong with saying, I, I attack false doctrine. I'm coming after false doctrine. I'm coming after sin, and I'm trying to rip it apart with God's word. Is your preacher... Is your preacher only, let me, let me ask you this, members of the church of Christ, is your preacher always just preaching about how bad you got it, preaching from the book of Psalms or Proverbs, and just how bad the world is, and that's it. I, w I couldn't, I, now that more I have grown, I couldn't sit there and listen to a preacher that says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Hey, preacher, when's the last time you've been out your office? I don't go out my office. Did you know? that people won't listen today. Preacher, when's the last time you've ever tried to defend the Word? I'm not defending the Word. It is because a lot of gospel preachers in themselves, they're just lukewarm. It's going through the motions. How many people today heard about the message, which is great, about the resurrection, but went home and cussed out their wife or drank beer or is running around on someone or is unfaithful because the preachers never preach about sin. They just giving you this lukewarm stuff. So I, in some ways, it's nice that he goes and he tries to present, but he's closed-minded. Robbie says James doesn't even realize that he is an error as he is, as it is pertaining to being part of a local body, Hebrews 10, and under the oversight of shepherds. Yeah, this guy wouldn't understand that he wouldn't have any oversight because he is a lone ranger, as I put it, on the message. He does not obey Acts 20, verse 7. No, he doesn't. We're going to look at some of this. So let's go to the next one. This is the guy, all right? This is James Sr., as we'll look at his Facebook page, and um, even the text message, maybe I can get those up there. But notice his sign. Look how his sign says. Jesus would rebuke the church of Christ. Did you know that that's accurate? Did you know that Jesus would rebuke, and actually Jesus did rebuke the church of Christ? You see in Revelation 2, 2, 2 right here, he says, I know thy works. Who's he talking to? Is he talking to the Baptist church? No, he ain't talking to the Baptist church. Is he talking to some lone ranger out there that runs around in a van that goes from town to town out here with these signs? Uh, with his wife, and you know, she's talking about they're talking about head coverings. I guess she might have a head covering right here 
you know, because if you don't have a head covering, you're going to go to hell, according to this guy. All right. And so Jesus, though, says, And how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and hast tried them. See, he gives the church of Christ good. He's Because the church of Christ, the church I'm a member of, has tried them which say that are apostles and are not, and found them liars. Well, the same thing with James. Are we going to try James? Are we going to try the Lone Ranger out here with three of them that is just saying, Repent! You're going to go to hell. You can't wear head coverings. You can't watch high school basketball. You can't go to Walmart. You can't have a website. You can't drive a car because the world drives a car. You can't. And this guy here is on a website. He's going to Walmart. You can't support troops. You can't support. You can't uh, have any kind of allegiance or pray for our country or pray for our troops or support uh, your family who have died defending for our freedom. You can't do any of that, but he's going to run around. He's going to buy gas at a gas station and pay for taxes for the government. See how he just wants to make all of these laws that the Bible doesn't declare that it's sinful, but he thinks he's God because he's coming up with these laws. He is a monk. You know, people call me, you know, so many times, Robbie, if you're still here, or anybody that's still here, you guys in the chat, uh, J.S. Brown. You know, people call... Uh, Christians, Pharisees, right? Because if there's a certain sin, very clear, you know, like fornication, the Bible's very clear about it. Very clear. We shouldn't fornicate. It's a sin. You keep doing it. You die in that state. You're going to do that. It's a sin. You separate from God. And they say, you're a Pharisee. My friends, this guy right here is the Pharisee. This guy right here is just making laws where they're not. Notice what Jesus says. So let's keep reading what Jesus, because Jesus did rebuke the church of Christ. All right? And he rebuked them. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. So you can leave. Christians need to remember that. You can leave the first love. I thought about this. You guys are still with me right here. The resurrection. The world is celebrating the resurrection. Many sermons today was preached about the resurrection. Rightly so. Very biblical subject. Let me think of this. When I was in the military, if we ever had to charge a bunker, and my captain was out front, and I saw a bullet go right into his head, and he fell down. And I thought, oh, man, I'm going to sound the horn to retreat, retreat, right, retreat. They killed the captain. The captain is Jesus. The captain raised from the dead. And many of us... Won't do any evangelizing. You guys talking about so many times though, you you know, even the world's talking about Easter. Let's, you know, they show pictures of, of candy and kids. Man, do you realize we have a king that raised from the dead and we are afraid of James over here? Or we are afraid to go door knocking? Or we are afraid of the local denominational preacher? Or we are afraid afraid of our friends that we work with that they might hear the truth and disagree with us? Man, I thought about this myself. I preached to myself too. I thought about that and I thought, man, when's the last time I went door knocking? I thought, man, I, gotta, I serve a king who actually raised from the dead and I'm worried about someone being mad because I knocked on their door. What about me worried about what the Lord is going to say when, when, when I give an account, when I am held accountable, and I don't even go out and evangelize, what is the Lord going to say? Right? So I went, and I went door knocking. I'm not bragging. I'm not saying, oh, look at me. Look at what I'm trying to encourage. All right? And we, we knocked about, I don't know, about an hour and 15 minutes, right? And that's not really long, really. But we got two ladies that said they would study the Bible with us. We're going tomorrow night to study with one and her children. And you know what we used to get the study? We used the subject of Easter. And we moved that over into showing that the early Christians did not celebrate this holiday of Easter, but they did, notice this, this is what they did. 
they came together on the first day of the week, and I had the printout, and I showed the individuals I was not rude, you know. And my Bible program's doing that again. I think I've got to lock it. That's what it is. All right. So on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, now this James guy, and Robbie put it in the text, he says you don't come together on the first day of the week. Look at this. This is why James will not come on truth with proof. All right? Now, someone earlier, a brother was talking about my grammar, and I understand that's good because he's right. My grammar typing, and I'm all time busy, and I got three children, and, and, and who knows what I may type out. But I can read, and you can read, and I got enough sense to pull the Bible verse where it says, Now, on the first day of the week, is that Saturday? Is that a Sabbatarian? No, the early Christians came together on the first day of the week. For what? The disciples came together to break bread. To break bread, friends. To take the Lord's Supper. We see that in 1 Corinthians 11. This individual, he's not going to discuss that. He's not going to debate that, friends. But anyways, I used that to, uh, to start another subject. You know what I did? I said, look, they came together. They assembled together on the first day of the week. And I said, who do you assemble with? And my next verse was Hebrews 10, 25, where it says, not forsaking the assembly. See, I wanted them to show them that they had to assemble. All right? That's what the Bible showed, and they read it, you know. So they said, well, we assemble with, one of them was a Pentecostal church. And I said, okay. Well, that's, okay, all right. That's good. You're, you, you're assembling. You see you should, right? And then I had, well, this is what people say today on how to be saved. You ever heard people say, you just accept Jesus Christ? You ever heard people just say, just be a good person or do good things? Now, we're going to get to what he says. I know. I may Just stay with me if you're with me. But all of these excuses that people make up that are not in the Bible on how to be saved, I said, have you heard people say that? They said, yeah, I've heard that. I said, you know, that's not in the Bible. There's no Bible verse for any of that. Faith only. You know, some of these Calvinists going around, we're saved by faith only, not even in the Bible. Thinking they're God, making up their own Bibles. Us Christians sometimes are afraid to confront these false teachers. Some of them are slick. Some of them are very knowledgeable. But the more you engage people, you learn. And the more you study, you learn. And you actually grow yourself because you apply the scriptures to yourself. Or you should, right? We should, even myself. I'm not perfect, you know, but I should grow and apply the scriptures. And then we got down to Acts 2.38. And I showed them this is what they did in the first century. Now, this guy, James, here, he says... We believe in water regeneration, false doctrine. You think he's going to come on and debate that? No. No, he's in his van. He's headed uh, to some other town to do his little picketing. He's going to jump in there and take off. See? He is not going to defend the gospel. He's not going to look at some examples. See, if James was here debating tonight, he'd say, You teach water baptism regeneration. One Christian up in Crossville asked him, said, What do you mean by regeneration? You think James answered? No, he didn't answer. See, he's just like most Baptists and other people. They won't answer. They won't give an answer. You know, when you ask them questions, he's the same way. But once you start the studying, and you, you, you put that in your mind, hey, he didn't answer that. Go back to that. He didn't answer it. What does it mean? Is he going to give an answer? But notice what Peter says. Look, guys, if you're in a denomination tonight, or you say non-denomination, if you're in a church that doesn't teach this right here, there's a problem. Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Look at this, King James. And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized in the, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Look, friends. If you're watching Truth With Proof, and maybe you come across this from his, YouTube, his website and you did a little research, you're, if your preacher isn't preaching this, he's a false teacher. All right? If he's not teaching, you need to repent. And a conjunction, be baptized. All right? We know what and is. It is both of them. And you're doing this in the name of Jesus Christ by his authority, and you're doing it for the remission of sins, in order to have your sins forgiven. All right? And this, uh, the second lady we come across, she says, well, I go to New Hope, New Hope Baptist. Oh, okay, well, I know the pastor at New Hope. He's actually the county mayor. See, again, it comes back to what is it again that I had on PowerPoint slide, Philippians 1, 14. 
What does that mean? What are you, what are you talking about, Travis? Look, I'm talking about I live in a county, and the mayor is a Baptist preacher, and do you think I'm scared to death of him? His name's Randy. I'm not scared of Randy. I'm not on here lying. He is a Baptist preacher, and he will not debate, and he doesn't teach baptism as required. See? Is that a lie? That is what he is. I'm not lying about this, and I'm not afraid of him. And that's what we need today. Look, how did we get to the point where the men are marrying men? It is because Christians are silent, and they're not willing to study with people, and they just sit in their pews. They go home. They did their Easter egg hunt, most of them. They went home. They are not going to engage in people. They say they believe in Jesus raised from the dead. This guy, Jesus, he really raised from the dead. You're talking about Jesus actually raised from the dead? And we're just going to sit on the couch all the time? I mean, come on. Our children are seeing us adults. We say this guy, Jesus, raised from the dead. Our preacher preached it. And we're going to go pick up Snickers and Reese's and not tell anybody about Jesus? I mean... It don't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. Are we really convicted? Is this stuff right? I mean, how is it false religions can convince their people to fly a plane into a building, which is crazy, you know, like Islam and stuff like that, but they think they're going to go to heaven, and we can't even door knock. We can't even be nice to people. We can't even be nice to our spouses sometimes. And we can't even be nice to our brothers and sisters. That's when we need to make a change. That's when we need to repent and look at our own self. Me too, I'm preaching to me. I know I got 18 people in here. You guys, I'm preaching to myself as well. I feel like preaching. I'm a little fired up tonight. Well, this is him. And, the, and yes, Jesus rebuked them because they left their first love. And now we're going to listen to him, right? This is his video. I hope this is clear. What if the Pharisees had a talk show? that make any sense? I'm going to do a teaching on it today. What if the Pharisees had a talk show? I had this guy, we stood outside a church of Christ, and he wasn't happy about it. He's a minister. Found out about it. I want to talk to the chat. How's the sound? About it. He challenged me to come on his YouTube show where he debates with other people. They're the ones that believe in water baptism, regeneration, Sunday's the Lord's Day, all kinds of other foolish man-made denomination false ways. And I asked him what the gospel was. He has an incomplete false gospel, water regeneration gospel. I found out he's worldly into basketball and Santa Claus and all the carnality of the world that the Bible says makes you an enemy of God. And so I told him, why would I come on your talk show, your YouTube show? I want to be like Jesus, Paul, John the Baptist, and Peter. Why do I say that? Jesus did not go would not go on a Pharisee talk show. John the Baptist rebuked them. Do you hear what he, he's calling me a Pharisee? Did you know that if you just watched March Madness today, you're going to go to hell? Do you know that? That's in the book of, not James, as we would read, excuse me, but in the book of James Sr. right here, he's going to write his own book. And he actually has the nerve to call me a Pharisee. Friends, you're in the chat. Rob, you know and studied, a lot smarter than me, you studied the Apostle Paul. My friend, are you telling me that if the Apostle Paul got wind that he could come onto a platform and, and it be fair and he gets to speak and I get to speak and we don't interrupt one another and he gets to use the Bible as he had used the Old Testament and I can use the Bible, and we could be cordial. You Do you not realize the Apostle Paul would definitely be there? I mean, look at what Paul went through to preach the gospel. Arrested, beaten, shipwrecked, all the things he went through. And you're telling me he wouldn't come onto a platform where he could possibly reach several hundred. Maybe if you guys share this or you like it, it could reach more. But again... Jesus and Paul would be here discussing the Bible in this kind of fashion, my friends. It is evangelism. He would definitely use it. When they walked up to him, Paul and Peter told the truth about the Word of God. They did not entertain mockers and false teachers. 
So it's foolish to say that Jesus would entertain any such thing as that. No, the Bible is clear, Romans 16, 17. Mark those who cause division by leaving sound doctrine. Avoid them. Now, did you guys catch that? This is what false teachers can do. Let, let's look. look. Look at this. Watch this, guys. Romans 16, 17. He says, now, the Bible says, I beseech you, brethren, mark them that cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. Look at that. You guys see that? Now, James, what we call this is making an excuse. Do you never realize how silly he would do in a debate? Because he says, look, I'm going to mark them and avoid them, but I'm going to drive all the way to Crossville and protest outside their building. Then I'm going to drive all the way to Mount Juliet who teaches at least, I would say, the, at least the plan of salvation. I'm not speaking for these congregations. But they would drive all the way to Mount Juliet and protest. But he says he's avoiding them. He won't come on truth with proof and discuss. And this is his excuse. See how that works? That lets us know that we can use the Bible in any way we want, but it won't be rightly divided. There comes a time when you do have to mark and avoid. There is a time. But we hadn't even had a discussion. We haven't even had a, a civil debate discussion. No kind of interaction really. Uh, just a little bit through an email and a text. And I sure wasn't going to get into much doctrine of Christ on a text message. Because who's, who's going to listen? What if the Pharisees had a talk show? Let's go back here. Could maybe come to repentance. Paul says... Bring him from the snare of the devil? We'll do that. We do not stand and argue for long, let alone go bring him from the snare of the devil? We'll do that. We do not stand and argue for long, let alone go on. So he's not going to stand for long. He's not going to discuss any of it. He's just going to say, you need to repent, you're going to go to hell. If you watch basketball, you're going to go to hell. This guy's not a Christian. This guy's not a Christian. He hadn't even become a Christian. You know, and he's going around just with these picket signs. And he's been targeting congregations. The talk shows of Pharisees or false teachers of today. Jesus said, do not cast your pearls. All right. And so did Jesus say that? Well, sure he did. But we'll, we can look at uh, what did Jesus do before that. It's debating. Look at this. Debating. Some people in the church need to see is really debating wrong. You know, like if I guess uh, if you're a King James only, it says being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, uh, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate. So we see debate. All right. Debate here. Oh, debate sinful. Look, the real word is strife. First time listener. Thank you, Travis, for helping us all learn. Well, I appreciate you. Thanks for being with us. All right. So when you look in your Bibles, you're using King James, you're just going to see this word debate. Here is the real definition of it, or strife, the understanding of it. Look, simply quarrelsome, contentious, angry contention. I have to watch myself, you know. I can't get all angry with, look, look, here, look. I don't know if my phone has been on silent. No, it's on ringer. So James isn't called in, or or. He's, his name's James Senior. He he has a disciple. His his name may be James Junior. I don't know, and that's kind of how these cultish people run around like that. Or his wife. They hadn't called. Why hadn't they called and discussed any of this? See, or an individual that seeks to irritate, but simply for her own sake, just to argue, argue. I'm not here just to argue, argue. Well, how do you know that? Well, because there comes a time where I've actually had to mark and avoid people. There's people that I have talked to, I have discussed with, I have debated, and then when they turn around and lie and things like that, yeah, you take application to it. But look, debating can help, friends. Notice this right here. Appreciate all the viewers. If you stuck with us for two hours, Tim, you want to come up here and we'll shake hands and you tell them goodbye. And I don't hate his guts, and I don't think he's going to eat me. <laughs> I didn't bring you. I didn't bring you into hamburger. Right. I appreciate right. you. All right. He said he didn't turn me into hamburger. So the point is, 
This guy come from Nashville. He was a Calvinist. We had a debate, and he left laughing, and we were fine. And you may read on his website, well, I blocked him. I did eventually block him. You know why? Because Tim went on some other Calvinist shows who lied. They just openly lied, and they made funny rap videos of me. That's really teaching the youth. And that was their manner. They're mockers in that fashion. They're, they're just simply wanting to argue to argue. They're not wanting to have any kind of real Bible discussion or see what the Bible says. So, would James say if you watch carpentry videos, you're going to go to hell? Since carpentry is secular. Carpentry. I, I guess carpentry like if you're watching videos on how to build something. The way James is, you, I don't know what all you ain't go to hell for. He just says all kinds of things. Did you not know that he's just, that's why I'm saying no one's going to take this guy serious. You know, you're going to go to hell for going to a high school football game. My son plays soccer. We're selling stuff on the soccer team. Do you know that? I'm sinful. I'm a heathen for that. See, the thing is, James don't understand how to separate some things. Can football uh, be something that someone takes part of and it's sinful for what how they do it? Sure. You go to a football game, you can get drunk. But football in and of itself, there's nothing wrong with it. You can go to a football game and cuss and get in a fight. But football is just... You got a football, and one team is playing against another team, and there's nothing in and of itself that's wrong. Just like, you know, the Apostle Paul, there was meat, there was meat that was offered to an idol. But a person could say, well, that's really just burger meat, and that idol is just a statue, you know, in the sense of like Christmas. You know, sometimes people just get all worked up about the man in the red suit. We know that's just a man. He's just a man in a red suit. He really can't fly. He can't fly around and go through the chimney. Did you know that? But see, the same thing with an idol. It's, it's not real. And if you grow, you'll understand that you can actually go and eat meat that was offered to an idol, and it don't matter. Don't, it might be cheaper. It might be on sale. And you just like, it don't matter. But this guy here, he thinks, you may be watching Gunsmoke. I don't know. What all? But I know like if you watch Gunsmoke and you read your Old Testament, you're going to have people dying. So I guess don't read the Old Testament. See, some people just go to the extreme. And he says debating. Look at this. 2 Corinthians 5.11 Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. He said, Paul, Jesus wouldn't do this. We're going to keep listening to him. So I know. Don't get so tired. We're going to go back. We're going to listen to what he says at Crossville Church of Christ. But look, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. That's what I'm trying to do. When I debate and discuss and study, that means convince by an argument, true or false. What do you mean by that, Travis? Well, I mean, it's very simple. If you're viewing this and you go to the Baptist church, I'm going to say, where is the Baptist church? in the Bible, and you're not going to be able to find it. Where are the churches of Christ? Well, it's a good place to start right here. The churches of Christ. And so now you should say, okay, is it true that the Bible has the churches of Christ? It's true. Okay, then the next step. What did the churches of Christ teach on salvation? Well, you can say, well, the Baptist church teaches faith alone. Is that in the Bible? No. What about the churches of Christ? What do they teach? Well, we read it. They teach repent and be baptized. Every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. Is it true or false? Well, it's true. I just showed you. You read it for yourself. And so we keep going. What about elders? What about female elders? What about musical instruments? What about can you be lost? And we keep going to the Bible and you go true or false and it don't take a real smart person to figure out, hey, 
What they're teaching is in the Bible. They're the church of Christ because they're teaching the doctrine of Christ. Once you obey the doctrine of Christ, you become the church of Christ, not a building. See? And that's the way we need to persuade people by just simple stuff like that. It's not, it's not too complicated. We don't have to come up with all of this big old theory stuff. It's very simple. Look, by evidence, what's our evidence? What's our testimony? Is it a story time? that we talked about when we were deer hunting? No. It is the scriptures. We go to the Bible or authority, evidence or authority. And that's what we need to do. We need to persuade men. I mean, we just preached a sermon. You heard a sermon, right? Jesus raised from the dead. This guy raised from the dead. He's both man and God, you know. So, we'll, I mean, we're going to explain that he is deity, but he raised from the dead. And when's the last time you talked to someone about the Bible? Seriously. I got 20 people in here. I had 25. Maybe five might have figured out they're not going to persuade anyone. Maybe they're just sitting on the couch. When's the last time you tried to persuade somebody? When's the last time you shared truth with proof? When's the last time you liked it? I'm just trying to encourage you. Look at Acts 13, 43. And now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them persuaded them to continue. Same word, persuaded them. Look at Acts 18, verse 4. He said, Paul wouldn't do that. Look, and he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath. What are you talking about every Sabbath? See, I guess Paul did not, I guess, was he a hypocrite? Did he mark and avoid them? Why does it say every Sabbath? Why did he stay some places months and years? That's because he saw that they were growing. They were the type of people that was somewhat accepting. They were those type of people. But if it's someone like James, you just mark and avoid them. Look at his website. He just marking, he just mark, just going through every place. But he ain't gonna have a debate. See, he's come in contact with a gospel preacher that says, "I want to discuss this live," and he runs off behind his little picket fence and his two people. That's a coward. He's a coward. He shows up when people are not ready. That the, you don't even know what he's teaching, and he just yells out stuff. And then he acts big and bad. That's what he does. Yes. 2 Timothy 4 2. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. He has some videos up on his article about Mount Juliet congregation now. In one of them, he won't even shake hands with folks that he claims to be false teachers. You know what? I'm fine. If he came here and didn't shake my hand, it really wouldn't bother me. But yeah. He don't understand any customs at all. But look at this word. And he reasoned to think differently with oneself. That's what Paul did. That's what I'm trying to do with people who watch this. I'm trying to reason. You're in a denomination. You're in a so-called church that we don't read about in the Bible. Okay, if I'm doing something, if I say or do something wrong, I want you to call in. You call in regardless. If you guys in the chat, someone wants to call in, and express some thoughts or views, you can do that as well. If you want me to pull up some Bible verses, I'm not going to be rude to you at all. I shouldn't be. Right? I should be able to uh, um, to hear your side. We see he reasoned with them, or even argue or discuss with them. All right? That's what Paul did as well. Look, Jesus was involved with it. Controversy is going to happen. Let's go. This is the website. We're going to get to this because I've been on a minute and we got to get to what his website is. Some people may have tuned out. They want to see this guy, right? So he gets on Crossville uh, Church of Christ and he puts their children up there with Santa. And he, he talks about their false water regeneration, but he sure isn't going to discuss it. He's got the preacher's name on here that their minister, Alan Judd, is carnal about high school football. Look at that. You know, maybe his son plays. I'm not sure. I know I played football in high school with Allen, but I'm pretty sure Allen does not still play football, so he's got to be talking about his kid. And if Allen is still playing football, he's going to get hurt because I ain't in his 40s. What is going on with Allen playing high school football? So if you know him, reach out to him. Tell him he doesn't even play him, but it more than likely will be his children. Look, he got these little signs up, James, the van dweller. He's got these signs. Look, this is why he won't debate. I put a sign up here. Jesus raised on Saturday. Look at the Bible. 
Mark 16, verse 2. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week. Is the first day of the week Saturday? Is it the Sabbath day? No, on the first day of the week. He's got a sign drawn. See, James is not inspired. He wants to condemn everybody for all of this stuff that he can't find in the Bible, and he makes all of these laws up. Look, Luke. Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, when they came into the sepulcher, bringing the spices they had prepared and certain others. So on the first day of the week, he's got his little sign wrong again. So you're going to have to learn something when you come across these guys. Here's his website. Now let's listen to this. Listen to this. All right. Did you get that? Oh, it didn't even play. I was just messing with you. All right. It should be playing here in a second. Wait just a second. I'm making a videotape. My name's Jim. What's your name, sir? My name is John. John. It's my wife, Debbie. Let me stand back a little bit so I can get you on video. You like talking about the things of God, right? All right. All right, so this is an older video that he put on his website, okay? And he just said his name was, what did he say his name was? John, let me, because I think this is a different guy. I don't know if this is James. My name's Jim. What's your name, sir? So his name is Jim. John. It's my wife, Debbie. Let me stand back a little bit so I can get you on video. You like talking about the things of God, right? All right. So what's your question, sir? Why are you asking? Did you see us out holding gospel signs? Yeah, I holding signs. Yeah. How many churches are there? How many churches are there? Well, it all depends on where you get your truth from. It all depends on where you get your truth from. I mean, this guy is a Christian, all right? He's an older Christian, an older brother, and he asked this guy that is affiliated with him. And that's what's interesting is James knew what the Lord's church teaches, and he still drove to Crossville. See, this is an old, like, older video. How is he marking and avoiding them by going out and harassing the worship assemblies by standing on the sidewalk, and he won't debate. See, they come up to him. They say, hey, you want to have a Bible study? No, I don't have a Bible study. Repent. It's my way or the highway. See, that is a closed-minded person. And you, many of you, are just like James. Did you know it? The only difference is you're just not going out and picking it. Do you know it? Do you know if you're a member of the Baptist church and you watch this and you, have, you live in Jackson County and you have not reached out to study me, you, at this moment, you are just like James. You are closed-minded in that fashion. The only thing is, you don't have your picket, but you need to get your picket, put the Baptist church faith only, and just go out there and just say, we're saved by faith only. And I'm going to say, come and discuss this live. Show me in the Bible where it's at. You're not going to be able to show it. Your preacher won't defend it, and you're still in the same church. You are just like this guy. I, that's the truth of it. All right. Now this. Let's listen to what this brother says. What Bible do you use? Then? Well, I get my truth from the Word of God, and the Word of God says there's one body of Christ, according to Apostle Paul. The Word of God says what? Says there's one body of Christ, according to Apostle Paul. One body. That's right. One body means that's the church. Is that correct? If they truly are born of Christ, absolutely. There's criteria to be in the body of Christ. You don't get in by going to a building. You don't go in, get in by being born a Baptist or a Lutheran or a Catholic. You don't get in by being um, just thinking you're in. You must be born in to the kingdom. See, he'll say, you got to be born into the kingdom. You know, that's what they say. you got to be born into the kingdom. Well, how are you born again? Well, Nicodemus tells us that. My name's Jim. Where do you attend, sir? I go to the Church of Christ. Church of Christ. Yes, yes. yes, yes. Um, um, that's where they teach you must be baptized for salvation. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've got a testing on my website about Church of Christ. They like to say they're not a denomination. They clearly are a denomination, sir. See? That's what they say. That's what they say on their website. But you know what? They won't come and debate it. They won't come. This guy won't come here. He's a chicken. They build a little website. And they just put bad arguments on the website. And he says, well, that's the, the Church of Christ teaches you've got to be baptized. Well, our Lord who raised from the dead taught you how to be baptized. Have you ever thought of that? That? The Lord who we serve, who we should be serving, he says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. 
I'm going to teach what the Lord taught. See, the Lord raised from the dead, and before he ascended to heaven, he sent out the great commission, and he said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And these street preachers are no different than all the other preachers who will not come on truth with proof. I'd be ashamed if I was a person that wanted to do what the Bible said, and I lived in Jackson County, Tennessee area. Jackson County, Gainesboro, Tennessee area. And my preacher would not come on and try to defend. I would start thinking, what is wrong with this? Why has this one preacher got his phone number on here? Why is he saying he will drive to my house, he will study the Bible with me, he will debate in a civil manner? What is my denomination hiding? Why is this preacher on here allowing you to call in and he will answer questions or will at least get back to the question? If I don't know the question, I don't know everything, you know. But he's willing to preach the word in season, out of season. season. He is willing to discuss openly that homosexuality, whatever sin is mentioned in the Bible, fornication, lying, cheating, stealing, those things. And he is willing to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these people. Wouldn't that make you think? I mean, I mean, just, just think a little bit about that. And I'm able to control myself. Call, I have people call in and, and they disagree. And they, you know, some of them are repeated callers. If I was so rude, why are they calling back? See how that works? And so the Lord taught that baptism was required. If he doesn't like it, he can take it up with the Lord. Let's keep listening here. Let me fast forward it up. It's interesting. it's interesting. Folks like, Folks you, like guys you guys will practice. practice United Church of Christ will practice, practice Sunday mornings from like 10 till so and so. If you read when Paul says they gathered on the first day of the week, let's see how you remember scripture. How late did Paul preach? <laughs> when was the last time that ever happened in the Church of Christ? Well, see, see, he's kind of insulting. When was the last time that happened in your Church of Christ? It's not this gentleman's. This gentleman is not 2,000 years old, and he is not the Lord. So when has that happened in the Lord's church? Well, we read about that, but when it comes to hermeneutics, there are some things that are incidental, see? And there are some things that just incidentally happen, you know, like maybe the lights in the upper room or the upper room, you know, but that comes with hermeneutics. These individuals don't really have enough of Bible knowledge or learning a biblical authority on how do we gain, and they overlook, and it says on the first day of the week when the disciples come together to break bread, their excuse is, well, you got to preach till midnight. <laughs> we got you there. Wait, well, what about the other verse part of it that says they actually, this is the purpose of it. This is why they came together. This is biblical hermeneutics, and you don't have to preach all night. If you want to preach all night, you can, all right? In today's time, more people are probably not going to be listening. Yes, James cares more about his website. Yeah, he's all about his website, right. And the thing is, uh, yeah, he won't personally study with you. Yeah, that's exactly right. This guy is just out promoting his website. But the thing is, his website's already out there, you know. And so his website has truth with proof. And so if people can see that I have a website and he has a website, they can compare and they can get on and they'll see truth with proof and they're going to see that I'm willing to debate him. He's a coward. He won't debate. And they're going to see that I'm pulling up the Bible screen upon it when we bring up the Bible or I'm allowing you to call in and talk and he's not. And so if you want to eventually become a follower of James the Van Dweller, you're going to have to do whatever James says and not what the Bible says. And I don't want you to be a follower of me. I want you to be a follower of Christ. Did Paul command preaching to be done till midnight every Sunday? That is a good one. We know he didn't. That don't happen, yeah. So the thing is, in the book of last time, that ever happened in the Church of Christ. And that don't happen, yeah. So the thing is, and the older guy says, it doesn't say you have to preach all night, right? And so 
these guys they don't want to they don't want to listen it's in the book of acts the, of the true ecclesia acts 2 says, says they, they gathered, gathered daily house to house, house, to house. That's, that's what we do what sir we do, right now i'm right traveling now, on, the on the road we gather daily, daily. There's, there's no there's one no day one to worship the word sir they never did that in the new testament body that's a roman catholic practice test it it's a roman catholic practice sunday do you know what sunday means sir what's your first name again John. John. I'm John. James I'm Debbie. Debbie. I forget names. Sunday. Sunday. Do you know where it you got, where its, it name, got its name, sir? First day of the week. They worship, they worship the sun. The sun. <laughs> that's why it's, I'm not saying the, saying the word Sunday is a bad thing, but I think saying that that's the new Lord's Day, that's not true. Oh, people argue about that. I'm going to say most people agree it was somewhere in the 6th, 7th, 8th century. They started establishing under a pope, and that's when they started making Christmas and Easter, which I believe. Do you guys celebrate Christmas and Easter? Your your United Church of Christ. Do they practice that? Or your, your Church of Christ. Do they practice that? I believe. We don't celebrate Christmas. Okay. Say in a debate, I'd say I'm not Church of Christ. And that's in the text message on his website. Easter, though. Easter's not when Christ was born either. Yeah, and I understand that. We don't celebrate either one of those. But I thought some of you, so let's some go. of your groups do. Let's turn see. Your, any of those people we just so basically, your will meets God's will. You must endure. I must endure in my marriage. Believed on Jesus, sir. That's a. You know what? Because you know what? Not a member of any man. Yeah, good. Good. That's good. Don't be a member. That's good. But you know what? We ran into a Church of Christ pastor in Wyoming, and I tested him to God. Church of Christ pastor with that. No man may. I'm a man. So again, this is what he he doesn't he says he doesn't like the word church. He he don't really want to use the word church. He said the Bible tells him not to attend on Sunday. We have Acts 20, verse 7. He says, basically, Sunday comes from worshiping the sun god, the sun god. Where did he come up with that? Do you think someone told him that? Maybe perhaps they did a long time ago. You might be able to Google it, but it don't matter if it's called Sunday because the Bible calls it the first day, all right? And so, same way with the Sabbath is the seventh day, right? Well, hey... You, if you give gifts, all right. If you if you go hunt eggs, if you watch football, you're going to go to hell. That's what he believes and teaches. Well, this is this is what I'm going to pull up. This is the um, we're going to look at Crossville. Let's look at Crossville, and then if you guys want to, and I emailed him. He, he put up the email and text messages on the website. What is interesting, oh, is. I do want to share this. If you're a member of the church and you want to reach out to this guy, I don't usually do this, but he put my phone number out there. And so, and he has probably blocked me. I just quit communicating with him. He can still call the show. He can uh, discuss, but he's not wanting to and he is a like he said he's he's a coward but this is his phone number he he texts me he put my phone number on the internet hey i put my phone number on the internet right right here you call me you love local call me don't be like james don't be close-minded you may not have the picket you may not be out harassing and yelling but you are close-minded if you watch this and you're not willing to study and you've seen the bible scriptures there has to be local people watching this that has seen the Bible scriptures. And you have went to your church service today and they did not teach you the plan of salvation rights. Not in the Bible. You're just close-minded as James. But if you want to call or text him, go for it. Ask him why he won't debate Travis Thomas. Ask him why he keeps going to all these congregations and picketing, but he's a coward to go toe-to-toe -to -toe in a civil Organized. You know why? Well, he doesn't have the Holy Spirit. He doesn't have the fruit of the Spirit. He doesn't have self-control. He doesn't have any biblical knowledge other than just repent. If you watch football, you're going to go to hell and such and so forth. No Bible scriptures. And this guy acts like he is John Rambo out here on the street corner. But he's not going to discuss. And I believe gospel preachers and the uh, you know gospel preachers that were zealous that we look up to and we think about how good example they were, like Marshall Keeble. A lot of people are like, Marshall Keeble, man, I'd love for him to be a preacher today. No, you wouldn't. Marshall Keeble be stepping on your toes about you guys evangelizing, 
I heard one time he had a meeting, someone came up so mad they smacked him in the face. You think today a lot of congregation a lot of congregation would be like, man, why are you preaching this? You need to be planning a youth trip or going to play dodgeball. Don't be stepping on nobody's toes. And so that's the church today in a lot of places. We need to be more zealous, man, and encourage. We got the truth. That's all I've heard. Um, you know, we have the truth. We have the truth. And then we hide it. And I ain't saying go out and fight and argue just for its sake. But I'm talking about be evangelistic. Talk to people. Let's listen to what he does up at Crosswell. Then we'll close the program. All right, let's listen to that. All right, so he puts on here. Crosswell Church of Christ Exposed. This is on his little website. That's about all he does. And he's got some one, one interesting thing. He don't ask for money. I couldn't believe that. Most of these false teachers do. But he is convicted in the sense that he don't ask for any donations. I'm sure he'd get a lot. Look how many he's marked. Look at this list. He just going through here, just putting everybody on here. Um, but he's got Crosswell on here. And I've got to go to the videos. Where's he put the video? Uh, let me go. Let me kind of navigate his website here. Videos. Street uh, preaching. I've been on his website some, and it is the most confusing his website, how they have it laid out to get to his videos of where he is at uh, Crossful. And then we're going to close. I know, I should have had it pulled up. Just bear with me. Let me look at the website as we all look at it, right? Email. Here we go. I hope this is it. You reckon he took it down? I apologize. It's not loading for whatever reason. Okay, here we go. All right, so he is standing outside of Crossful Church of Christ. So, Sister Robin, where are we? We are standing outside of the Church of Christ. Ready to preach the gospel, brother? Yeah, Church of Christ, a whole bunch of false ways, water baptism, um, Sunday is the Lord's Day. It's a denomination invented in the 1800s by Campbell. They keep a lot of worldliness. They don't use instrumental music. We agree with that, but they definitely use it in their lives. A lot of every Church of Christ person we ever met is worldly and carnal. They see us out here. We got our signs. Jesus would rebuke the Church of Christ. We have a testing up. We'll be adding to it. So it's just another man-made flavor. Jesus in Mark 7 rebuked the Pharisees. All right. I hope that wasn't too loud. It was loud on my end, but uh, yeah, his contact information. Where'd I find it at? Let me. I'll put it in the chat. Oh. Uh, did I email him? I'm trying to remember. Jeff told me about him. My, his website or my internet's running real slow. But you notice he talks about how the Church of Christ came across 1800s. Let me, let me tell you how ignorant he is. He does ignorant. for adding the washing in pots of cups. Look, look at this. This is how ignorant. When people say, the Church of Christ started in 1800s. The Churches of Christ. How could the Churches of Christ start in 1800 when we read it from the King James translation around the 1600s? Right? It was before then. We know these are translations, but it was before then. 
So how could the Lord's Church be started in 1800? See, it's just ridiculous, and that's why. See, if you guys would just go back to the Bible, you could debate. You could you could show clearly. If you just go back to the Bible, all right, you could show that women cannot be elders. How, Travis? Just go back to the Bible and just apply biblical hermeneutics. Now his, I hope I'm still streaming. Okay, let's see here. All right, maybe I went all the way down. Let's see. Oh, here it is. I'll put this in the link for you, Robbie. Or for whoever else. Want to reach out? Ask him. Why won't he come on truth and proof? Why is he harassing these churches and he won't debate? There, there I think that's his email, all right? And so, look at look what man-made man religion, religion has done. Buildings, traditions of men, worldliness, worldliness some of them even adhere to, to uh, Good uh, Friday, Easter, Easter, and Christmas. Christmas. Instrumental music, we agree with that, but they definitely use it in their lives. A lot of, every Church of Christ person we ever met is worldly and carnal. See, he doesn't understand about musical instruments, about the worship with instruments and not worshiping with instruments. He doesn't understand that buildings are authorized. They are authorized through expediency. Everything we should do is should be authorized. Where's he getting his authority to drive around in a van? Where did they have vans in the Bible? Oh, they didn't have vans in the Bible. Are you telling me that he's using something that's not in the Bible? Where is he getting this website? It's not in the Bible. And so it just comes down to these guys have no sense on how to examine the scriptures. And you know what? In many ways, he's just not like denominational people. And so we've been standing out at the Crossville Church of Christ peacefully with our signs. And there was about six or eight men standing in those doors for the longest time looking. I think they went on the internet, checked out our website. No one's come out to welcome us. No one's come out to say what's up. Well, they know we oppose Church of Christ. So, but here's the problem: a couple problems. Jesus said, "Love your enemies." We love them if they're an enemy of the truth. So we come and tell them the truth. They haven't come out. It also says in First Peter three fifteen, "Be ready to give an answer." Yeah, it says First Peter three fifteen, "Be ready to give an answer." Travis invites him to truth with proof, and he don't want to have to give an answer. He don't want another preacher to stand beside of him and ask him questions back. He don't want that. He don't want to have to be able to engage at all. We see that from these Christians that approach him. Like uh, J.S. Brown said in the chat, he don't want any discussion. He wants it his way or the highway. And he's just like all, just about all religious people today. Do you know it? Life Church in Cookville, he's just he's just the same. He is just the same. He's just not out picketing, but he's closed-minded. He's not willing to look at the Bible. He's just like people that I've met that attend these other denominations. See, and sadly, in some characteristics, he's just like some members in the Church of Christ when they say, well, we've always done it this way. This is the way that we've always done it. You know, different. What about the Bible? What about going back to the Bible and saying, well, maybe today could be a little bit different. We're not changing God's command. We're not changing, but sometimes maybe expediency may have changed in today's time. we got to make sure all of us are not like this guy, that all of us are just not out here like this, being closed-minded, being ridiculous. Yeah, in a synagogue, which was a building, but the church is not the building. All of y'all know that. None of their elders or leaders have come out to give an answer. So far, about the only good thing I can say is they haven't called the police on us. 80% of the churches call the police on us when we stand peacefully on a public sidewalk. They may still yet. Maybe the cops are too busy. I don't know. And so why would the men all stand there and not come out? They're all dressed in their suits. Oh, hey, Nick, you're on truth with proof. You're live. Good evening, Chris. Good evening, Travis. How are you tonight? Pretty good. Just watching I, this I, I, uh, street preacher guy, which I remember 
uh, I think you engaged with a street preacher at one time. I remember when we talked about that. You know what? I certainly did. I certainly did. And so let me say this. First of all, before I make a comment real quick, if yeah. you don't mind, I, I, I'm not trying to correct you by any means, sir, but they, they did authorize vans. He said, where, you said, where does he get the, the authority to they had caravan? <laughs> Never mind. It was a joke. Anyway. The Dodge? Was it, a, was it a Dodge? It was a Dodge. It had a side nine Cummins in it. So, <laughs> but here's the issue. You know, Jesus said, uh, he said he desires, God desires all men be saved. Come to acknowledge the truth. I will be calling this individual tomorrow and to see if I can set something up with him as well. First Peter 3.15, he said, I promise you, sir, I will give him a reason. And in defense of the faith it lies inside me. And I promise that to all my brothers and sisters that I will do it with meekness and kindness out of respect for him because God loves him. He does. I love him and never met yep. him yet. Yep. And I pity that, you know. Somebody that, but but I don't know if I ever told you this, so I just want to make one statement, and, and I won't take the night of Travis. <clears throat> We're supposed to study to show ourselves approved, not workmen that needs to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I don't know if I ever told you this. I did not grow up in a church family, but I had some involvement with some some with some religious sects in regards to denominationalism. And what happened is I studied to show myself approved. I studied. It says, I'm not trying to speak in first person, but that's what we're all called to do. Right. Is we're studied to come out of those denominations. Paul said in first in Galatians 1.13, you've heard of my conversation in times past in the Jews' religion, where I persecuted the church of God and I wasted it. But when you go to verse 23, it says that he now preaches the faith and what he wants destroyed. You see, we need to study to be able to come out of these sects, these different schisms. Now, these, now, every comment that I heard that, that that gentleman make on that video, I promise you, I will. First Peter four eleven, I will speak where the where the where, if any man speak, let him speak the word of God. Okay, in Colossians three seventeen as well, I will give him a book, chapter, verse. I promise you tomorrow for everything I discuss with him. Yeah, uh, Lord willing, next Sunday night, um, uh, call back and share a little bit if you get anywhere with him. Well. You know, I, and, and that's what it's about. It's about love. It's not about a competition. Right. You know? uh, I mean, the, the thing of it is, it's, I'm just a truth seeker. I like the name of your show, Truth with Truth. I just want to know the truth. And, and if this individual is willing to reason with right. me, that's what they did in Acts 17. Um, I'm sorry that he, I wish that he would call your show. I wish that you, some, you could get something set up with him. Because that's beneficial for everybody. Not just for him and you to have that discussion. Right. But that lets everybody that has interest in spiritual things be able to make a discernment as to what does the Bible truly say. Exactly. What is it, you know? And, and it's not about an argument. It's just about having a civil discussion. And, uh, and, and, and we can call it a debate or we can call it whatever we want to. Right. But it, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's just um, being able to shine the light of the truth of the gospel. John 17, 17. That's right. And so anyway... Um, you know, you don't have to be born into this and these different traditions and all that. I studied everything that I worship and believe as an elder at the Fulton Street Church of Christ is done by what we have the authority to do and what is expedient. So um, with that, I'll let you go, sir. Thanks for taking my call tonight. I appreciate you. appreciate the work that you do for the kingdom and your love and your conviction for the truth, Travis. I appreciate you, sir. I appreciate you too, brother. Have a good night. Have a great night. Hey, as I put up earlier, we persuade the argumentation. You know, like here's the argument: Do we should we study to be to show ourselves approved to God? True or false? Well, yeah. All right. You guys are actually studying in somewhat tonight in this fashion. You're on truth with proof. You could be watching something else. I think all the ball games are over. But if you watch them, you've sinned, right? According to this guy. You know, uh, like, uh, was it the game was just up? Uh, Duke and North Carolina State. Did you guys see that before this come on? Did you see that North Carolina they pulled out and well, they did pretty good in North Carolina State and they won. But did you see the referees playing how the referees were with Tennessee and Purdue? They were just the, the refs, I mean, were awful. Really, in the big scheme of things, though, does that really matter? No, this is more important. Study thyself approved unto God, you know. Can you watch a little 
a TV? Sure, can you can you uh, go to a theme park and ride a roller coaster ride? This guy wants you, he don't want you to do nothing but what he says, right? And he doesn't understand authority. Let's go back and finish a couple videos here of Crossville. All right, so let's go here. We've been standing out here quite a while. None of the men have come out. I'm wondering if it's a Revelation 21.8. All right, let's, all right. Deceived by Church of Christ with their false water baptism gospel, their worldliness. Now, this is peaceful. These older Christians, if they've obeyed the gospel, they may just be visiting. I don't know. I don't know them, but they're just politely walking to the car. He's peacefully there. Their false, false Lord's, Lord's Day, Day Sunday, Sunday theology. theology. Look up our testing. Test yourself. yourself. The word of God is true. true. You're not going to find eternal life in the traditions of men. Your worship is in vain, per Mark 7. Loving our neighbor today with the truth. See, he's just a loudmouth. That's all he is, is a loudmouth. And like Nick says, I love his soul. But he is just, that is what he is. He's just a loud mouth, just out there. He's not willing to, these people, maybe maybe Nick will reach him. He sure wouldn't come on truth with proof, you know. And so when he talks about other oh, Lord's Day, the Lord's Day, look at this. Revelation 1, 10, look at this. Look here, the Lord's Day. Right here, is the Lord's Day in the Bible? I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. There's the Lord's Day. We have it. The Lord's Day, all right? What day is the Lord's Day? When did the Lord raise from the dead? We looked at Mark 16, 1 and 2. We looked at Luke on the, the first day. We looked at Acts 20, verse 7. We looked at, or we will look. We didn't look at it this time. Get a little bit carried away sometimes, you know. We're just looking at stuff. We ain't even pulled it up yet. But let's see here. 1 Corinthians. We're not, we're not talking about head coverings just yet. He might call in. He might have a question on head coverings. He thinks all the women are uh, sinning if they don't cover their head. I've seen half of y'all men out there. Well, y'all look, y'all look like y'all need to be covering y'all's head. Look at this. Lord's Supper. So we have the Lord's Day. We have the description of the communion as the Lord's Supper. Breaking of bread as well. We have Revelation 1.10, the Lord's Day. We have Christ raising on the first day of the week would be the Lord's Day. And so that is where that comes by implication. All right? We're not going to have a Bible verse where it says the Lord's Day is Sunday on the first day of the week. But we have enough of, of biblical hermeneutics where we can piece together things. Listen to, listen to this. Your heart is pricked by the Holy Spirit. And the Look, these people trying to leave, bus pulling up, He's peacefully there. No, he's annoying. He's an annoying little gnat that won't come on truth with proof. And he makes his little website and then he runs. That's a coward. All right. I mean, a gospel preacher is challenging him from the church of Christ. I'm talking about no denomination. See, if he comes and debates me, he's debating a gospel preacher that is actually doing what the Bible says. All right. And I'm not even the smartest one. Could you imagine some of the gospel preachers if they would just get out of their office and actually read the book of Acts and start challenging and studying and being kind to people when, even when they disagree? And it takes hard work. It's, I mean, it's hard when someone calls in if someone calls in and gets under your skin. But the more you do it, imagine some of these young men that are able to to know Greek and pronounce Greek and they're preachers and they only sit in their office. They would squash little guys like this out here preaching. That's what we got to get back to. All right. And let's keep listening. Then you desire all truth. Here's here's the charge. Here's the charge. Charge. If your heart is pricked by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of truth, John 16, leads you to all truth itself. See, this guy is so, um, um, he doesn't know the Bible so well, he doesn't even understand. In John 16, Jesus is actually talking to the apostles. And the apostles were guided into all truth, and they left us all truth that we would need, suffice information to go to heaven. 
and he thinks, I guess, that he thinks he's an apostle. And you don't stop short. You've got a few things right. You don't have a pagan male phallic symbol on your roof. Maybe you don't do certain things that the evangelicals and the Catholics do. But you would keep going in truth. Ma'am, ma'am, don't be a feminist, ma'am. You're not supposed to rebuke men and truth. Ma'am, ma'am, don't be a feminist, ma'am. You're not supposed to rebuke evangelicals and the Catholics do. But you would keep going in truth. Ma'am, ma'am, don't be a feminist, ma'am. You're not supposed to rebuke men. Look how he acted toward a sister. Toward a sister in Christ. I, I have sisters that I assemble with, older sisters that are so sweet. And he says, don't, don't be a feminist. You're not supposed to rebuke, what he say, a man? But his, his wife is down the street yelling with a picket sign. Or just holding it. Unless she's just holding it. I don't know. You would keep going in truth. Ma'am. Ma'am, don't be a feminist, ma'am. You're not supposed to rebuke men. And your head's supposed to be covered, ma'am. Why are you wearing jewelry and makeup? So, her head wasn't covered. She told him. I think she told him to be quiet or something. I don't blame her. I would have just said, man, you are knowing. You don't want to study with this guy. This guy actually is very nice. He has self-control, this brother here, and he's trying to study with this guy. He don't want to study. He's not open-minded. We get it, Travis. What about you? What about you? What about your man-made church? We're talking about James and I. What about all the people in Jackson County that go to some other kind of church that we don't read about in the Bible? And they act like this guy's ridiculous, and they are closed minded as him. The only difference is he's out with a picket. He sure won't come on and discuss. Your preacher won't come on and discuss. This guy won't study. You won't study. Maybe you need to follow this guy. He's very similar to him. See, we need to be open minded. That's what Nick's saying. We need to be open minded. It is her head is not covered. Your head is to be uncovered. Why do you have hair on your head? No answer. No, no answer. She has short hair. Hair is not the covering surge of long nails. It's why I won't study the word of God with you because you're void of the truth of God. You're in compromise and man-made religion. Jesus, Holy Spirit. See, another excuse. I'm not going to study with you because you're in compromise. Well, have you ever thought that maybe you could study with them to show them how they're compromised and open the Bible and read it and keep reading where Paul says we have no such customs in the church of God. The church of God and the church of Christ are the same church. You got that right. We see Jesus prayed for unity. There was no denominational. When Jesus established his church, man may come along. Beckons you to all truth, not compromise. By the way, audio and video will be going up. Audio and video will be going up on our testing, and you guys will be exposed on the internet. No, sir, I can't Bible study with false teachers. I, I preach the word to seekers. You aren't seekers, so you're in here. Sir, you can email me. You, you just lie the word to seekers. You aren't seekers, so you're in here. Sir, you can email me. You, you just lied about head coverings. He didn't lie about it. He wouldn't even give him time to answer. He ain't gonna. He ain't gonna allow you. That's why he can't debate. Because most people today don't have no self control. They can't allow someone to present their side because the way society is, everybody is right. And that's the way this guy is. That's the way your preachers are. Sadly, in the Lord's church, sometimes that's the way their preachers are. They're always right. If you question someone, they get upset. We should not be like that. All right, we're going to keep going. There you go. Let's do a Bible study. Acts 10. How did Cornelius have the Holy Spirit without water baptism? How did... Here, let's do a Bible study. Acts 10. How did Cornelius have the Holy Spirit without water baptism? Why don't he come and debate that? Why doesn't he come on and we can present the, what the Bible says on that? Because I'm going to show you in Acts 10, 48, Cornelius was water baptized and he was baptized for the remission of sins. And the purpose of receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit 
did not save him, nor did it save anyone. It only was a sign, according to the Bible, that basically the Jews would see that the Gentiles were offered salvation. What are you talking about, Travis? I thought it was truth with proof. And we're going to look. You're supposed to be bringing up the Bible. Well, we are right here. Look. He commanded them to be baptized. Cornelius commanded. Is your preacher telling you to, to obey a command that it's commanded to be baptized? What's it baptized for? For the remission of sins. See this? Can any man forbid water? And so we say, what? What about the Holy Spirit? Look at this. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify, uh, magnify God. Look at this. This is where he's confused on. Just like all, many denominations. I can answer this. The baptism of the Holy Spirit did not save the Gentiles. The blood of Jesus saves when you obey that command of repent and to be baptized. This was a sign here it showed for the Jews. Look, they of the circumcision, who's that, the Jews, which believed, were astonished. Wow, God has poured out. See, racism was going on. A lot of racism going on. Jew and Gentile. And the miracle of God says, we have declared that salvation can be to these Gentiles. And Peter commanded them to be baptized. What? Did he command them to be baptized for an outward sign of an inward change that you guys say in these denominations? No. He commanded them to be baptized just like Peter preached in Acts 2.38 for the remission of sins. That's why this guy won't debate. That's why this guy will not reason because the Bible is right. Travis isn't right. The Bible is right. Now, if Travis is teaching what the Bible is right, Travis is right in that sense, but the Bible is right. Let's go on here. Let's listen to him, and we're going to close out. If someone else wants to call in or have a comment or a question, you can. Let's go on down here. Sir, are you a seeker here? Have they told you you can't So now he's, he's yelling at people that are trying to visit. I mean, how do you imagine it's your first day visiting. First day. You attend Crossville Church of Christ and you got this guy out here looking like, acting like a nut and he won't even study. See? If he would actually said, yeah, let's come in, let's study, let's talk, let's reason, let's discuss this. He don't want to. He doesn't want to. He only wants to pick it. Now look, look at this guy. You doing all right? How you doing? Are you with the church of Christ? Oh, yeah. 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 Do you like a gospel card? Yeah, we We'll show you why at our testimony. We're going to have audio and video up. Our testimony of why the church of Christ is just another man-made religion. I just asked one of your deacons. You teach water baptism regeneration. And what's that? That's what the church of Christ teaches. What's the reason? You teach water baptism regeneration. And what's that? That's what the church of Christ teaches. He won't even answer it. Listen. Regeneration. And in Acts 10, this is what I want you to go over. Yeah. In Acts 10, Cornelius has the Holy Spirit before he's water baptized. So the doctrine they teach, we teach water baptism, but it's not efficacious. It does not save you. It does oh, it doesn't save you. See, he said, we teach water baptism, but it has nothing to do with your salvation. Well, that's interesting. If he has all truth, as Michael put, he is so intelligent does he not know the Bible says even baptism doth now save us? Look at that. Water baptism. Even baptism also now saves us. Peter preached it was for the remission of sins. Peter says baptism doth also now save us. Peter commanded Cornelius to be baptized, to be saved for the remission of sins. And that guy acts like, that he that the Lord's church can't answer him. I'm willing and ready to give an answer to people that are out picketing or silent people or denominational preachers. Are you? As we get ready to close out. I appreciate you guys for watching. I know I was on a while, but I guess I just had a lot to discuss with this guy and uh, the videos and such. So I do appreciate all you guys for staying in with me this long. If you want to study later, if you live local, contact me. Call me up. 
hey, I'll come to you. We'll study God's word, right? We want to study. We want to see what it says. And I just want you to become a Christian. I don't want you to become a Methodist. I don't want you to become a Catholic or anything else. I don't want you to become Church of Christ. I want you to become a Christian. Look, sanctify them through the truth. Thy word is truth. I want you to look in God's word, see what it says, and simply obey it and become a Christian. Just like lost people became Christians in the New Testament. That's what I want you to do. I want you to assemble with people, encourage them, worship God in spirit and truth, just like they did in the New Testament. And I want you to better your lives in the sense of, of growing, not living in sin, walking in the light, being faithful, and bringing others to Christ. That's what I wish you would do, and I know that I hope you pray for me and want me to do that as well. So, and again, I do appreciate all you guys watching. All right? Next week, before I close out, I'm going to bring up a YouTube channel. All right? I'm getting ready to close out. So look at this real briefly about what is coming up on next. Because I'm pretty sure this guy, he is not going to come on Truth With Proof. He is too scared. He is too much of a coward to do that. All right, look here at live. Here I am live. But look, right here. All right, so next week, we I got some literature in the mail. All right, if you live in Jackson County, I know some people did. They told me that as well. We are going to talk about this new church. And now, it's not new. There's no new church, but they're going to plant a denomination. All right? It ain't planting a congregation of the Lord's church. And it is the Mennonite church. I believe that's what it's called. Let me see if I can find the literature. But oh well, we're going, I'm going to reach out to them. They give me their phone number. We are going to reach out and try to see what we can do as far as learning about what they're teaching. And is it in the Bible? And some things they may have right. But are they going to be open about, hey, maybe I got some things wrong. Would you want to study? Would you want to? And then after that, we're going to have a guy who had, is claiming that he left the Lord's church, and he talks. he's going to talk about why he is a Calvinist. All right? We're going to discuss that as well on Truth With Proof. All right? Again, appreciate you guys so much. Appreciate the encouragement. Um, I was going to say go Vols, but according to James, I, that would be a sin. Um, but... I guess you can put in the comments if you watch basketball. Who's going to win it? Is UConn going to win it all? I don't know. You know, I hate that some people think that every little thing is a sin, but I'm pretty sure he probably goes to Walmart. There's people sending at Walmart. Doesn't mean I have to take part of it, all right? And um, that's what you're going to get with people like that. Oh, they're not going to debate. They're not going to discuss. I I hope that the point is, too, is if you if you are somewhat, you know, you, you think that you're religious or you're spiritual or whatever, that you're not going to be closed-minded like him, that you're willing to go to the Bible and study it. If you live local, contact me, even after the show. I encourage you, call me if you want to study. You don't have to agree. We're going to study with a lady tomorrow that goes to a denomination who believes that they can do miracles, and we've already talked to her about it. We said, look, why do they pay for health insurance? I said, did you assemble when COVID happened? She said, yes, we assembled. I said, oh, you met in the building? No, they didn't meet in the building. They met in cars. I said, ma'am, your preacher says that they can heal people out of wheelchairs and raise the dead. And you're parked in the parking lot watching it on social media. It doesn't match up. That's what this show is about to get people to think. It's hypocrisy. They can't do miracles. So, but she was open. She said, yeah, I'd love to study more about that. And, of course, you know, uh, other things. So, again, appreciate you watching. I hope I encouraged you. You encouraged me. Again, Lord willing, next Sunday night, we're going to be discussing what I'd mentioned. We really care what the Bible says. We want to prove.